Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Here I have a Logitech sound system. It's a round sound speaker Z506 and it's actually a really good quality one. It's battered and it's old, but it's a really good quality one and it still works. I have all the speakers and everything for it. Um, so it's been sat in the shed for about two years and I've not used it. And I thought, wouldn't it be a good idea if I could use it in the garden? Why not? But the thing is, it needs power, of course. It needs power. So you get this thing and plug it in, and then you can use it, of course. However, that isn't really ideal. Uh, I don't really want wires in the garden and stuff like that. So I thought it would be a good idea, and a good video, if I was to convert it into a battery system, battery powered. And even better, if I could get it to charge up too. And I've actually done this, so this recording is uh, in retrospect. I've actually already done it, it's finished. But I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, yeah, and it works really well actually. So, so underneath, I took this thing away. The subwoofer or woofer or whatever it's called. Let's put this down here. Okay, so, we need to first know how this thing works. 250 volts comes in here, AC. It gets rectified and stepped down to something in which to power the motherboard with, which can then power the speakers. Because, of course, there are lots of speakers that get plugged in at the back here. So, what I did is I looked at the power board and looked for some sort of signs to indicate what voltage it would be. And there weren't any signs. So, what I did then is I got the power cable, which is around here, which came from the power board and I chopped it. So the power that, sorry, the cable that came from the power board to the main board, I chopped it. And then what I did with my multimeter, I probed the uh, power supply or the cable that came off the power supply, the snipped cable, to find out what voltage it was. In my case, it was 16.5 volts. And I thought, well, how can I sort of power that? I could, you know, what sort of battery chemistry could I use? So what I did then with my power supply, I forgot about the power unit or board, and I powered the motherboard directly. So the other side of the cable now, I plugged it in, and I gave it the 16.5 volts, and it worked. It worked fine. So then I tried the ranges, and I, I discovered that it could go right down to 10 volts and still work. So, I could have put a lead acid battery in there, a 12 volt battery, and that would be fine. That would also work, but they're really heavy. So then I thought, how about lithium? The thing is, with lithium, well, like all the battery chemistries, it has to be the right voltage. So, with lithium, they come in 4.2s, basically, so... I could have had uh, 4.2, wouldn't be enough. 8.4, wouldn't be enough. So um, 8.4, add 4.2, about 12, 13 volts, that would have been fine. But at the same time, the original voltage of this is 16.5. So I thought, well, what's the next one up? 4 cells, 16.8. So 4 lithium cells, 16.8 volts, that would be enough to power this unit. So here's what I did. I got this little thing, there's, there's where you can see the snipped wires there. That's where I snipped to uh, research how many volts this thing actually output and how many volts it needed and whatever else. That's the snip point. Um, yeah, so I got this little battery box thing, put four cells in. Now, the four cells are, are fairly random. They could be different uh, ages, they could have different capacities for all I know. What I do know is they all work. Yeah. But there's no BMS here. I've literally wired them in series, straight to the power. Now, not only have I done that, I've wired them in parallel with the original circuit, which means that when this is plugged in, these batteries also get charged up by the power here. Now, you've got to be careful with that, because like I said, there's no BMS. There's nothing to detect any irregularities on these cells here. So, potentially... It is quite. It is dangerous. Um, well, I say potentially. I've never seen anything like this. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's just people panicking. I'm pretty sure this will be fine. But like I said, it's not something you'd want to do commercially because you do. You know, you need to be 
cautious about safety. But for me, I don't mind too much. Anyway, getting back to it. So uh, the red goes to the plus, of course, and we go right down here. And you work it out, and it's 16.8 um, volts Vmax. This thing outputs 16.5 volts, therefore it can charge it. So essentially what I have here, I have the original circuit, but with a battery paralleled into it. Uh, on the, the secondary side of this power supply thing. Now, I probably should have some sort of diode as well, some sort of protection circuit to um, to stop voltage going back into the um, power board. But I don't know, I mean, you know what my products are like, I just give things a go, play about and hope for the best. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. Most of the times it is good. Like this one, this actually works perfectly. But you know, time will tell. So, there are the four cells, so we go like this, and that's 16.8 volts, Vmax. Um, of course, nominal voltage isn't that, nominal voltage is more like 4, 13, 14 volts, which uh, that's also enough to power it. Now, one of the bad things is that with this being powered to, or from 10 volts, that means that it will drain it until the cells are 2.5 volts, and we don't want that because that's discharging the cells far too much. So it should really do with some sort of um, charge level indicator or something to start beeping or something when it's low. I don't know. You know I, don't, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's just playing about. So anyway, that's what I've done. I've wired that in there in parallel with the rest of the circuit. And um, it works. And I'm going to show you. So originally I had tissue wrapped around this just to, you know, just to force it in and check to see if it would work and it does work but now I've got this thing and I'm hoping that this is going to be better because you don't want this shaking about really um, so let's run this in here hopefully without breaking any wires now the other thing as well is that um, the speaker needs to fit in as well okay it's just kind of rammed in there but um It'll do. <laughs> so, there we go. A nice bit of forcing never hurt anyone. <laughs> right. Now if these screws can just ram this down, that would be great. There we go. Run this bit down. Probably I should have kept to the tissue paper. But, um, you know, whatever. So the next thing I need to do is get some royalty free music and try it out <coughs> now it might sound a bit crappy because you're not meant to have stuff rammed in there of course <laughs> okay now what have we got here so I've got all these speakers and things here so this one is a, a control one hang on let me just turn this this way so this one is a control um, module, if you like, or control control speak master speaker or something. I don't know. So there's the master speaker now. Should be able to turn this on. Yeah, there you go. Right. So it's turned on. You can see the little light there. Might as well add another speaker. Why not? Okay. What's this one? Black. Put the black one in. Now we need audio in, which is the green one. Audio in. Well, it's certainly turned on, so that's one thing. Now we have to play this music. It should work. Here we go. Copyright free music. Ok, 
okay, that, that's full volume on my phone. Full volume up here. And it works perfectly. See? And there you go, so it actually works. So I'm going to have this thing in the garden. I want to charge it up in that very poor way. You just put this in. Now, I don't encourage you to do this because, like I said, there's no BMS. In an ideal world, oh, I'll just turn this on and turn that off. In an ideal world, what would happen here is the 16.5 volts will go directly to the cells and charge them up. And it will do that. But of course, uh, like I said, with no BMS, you can't tell if some cells are on their way out, if some cells are being overcharged and the other undercharged and all this sort of stuff. And that's why I don't recommend it. But I mean, as far as testing and messing about goes, for me it's great. So yeah, don't do this, but it does work. Thanks for watching. Bye.